you can obviously imagine the pace at which Moderna moves. It's uh, we sometimes joke around Moderna speed, right? <laughs> and and those are that's the kind of speed you need when you're dealing with programs that are um, impacting people's lives, right? There's no time to waste. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the HR Leaders Podcast. On today's episode, I'm joined by Noah Rabowitz, who's the Vice President and Global Head of Learning and Development at Moderna. In the episode, we talk about the Moderna University and how they're creating a one-of-a-kind learning organization. As always, before we jump into the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and follow on your favorite podcast platform. With that being said, let's jump in. Welcome to the show, Noah. How are you? I'm great, Chris. It's yeah, been a while. doing good. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Have you been on holiday yet? I've managed to escape. <laughs> you know, I've been taking some sort of like miniature holidays. I, I haven't done one full blown, you know, get off the grid uh, holiday. It's been like a day here and a day there. I'm actually uh, going to take this Friday off and drive to Buffalo to see Metallica with my brother-in-law. Nice. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I think the last time I saw Metallica, I was in my skateboarding days when I was maybe 15 <laughs> yeah well they've, they've, got, they've, they've been around a while they 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 have some staying power they, yeah. they do don't they because like whenever like they did they're kind of like yeah they've they've kind of transcended in multiple generations somehow yeah legendary um, legendary yeah. oh man i don't think i would even have the energy for a metallica concert in this day and age <laughs> if they're anything like they used to be <laughs> when, I was, when i was younger i'll be there for maybe like an hour and i'll be like let's leave now i need to go rest <laughs> Oh no, no! You got to get into the right mental zone, and then and then you can you can stick it out for the full three hours. Yeah, nice, nice. Um, tell yeah. everyone um, a little bit more about yourself personally and your journey to where we are now. Yeah, um, I mean, I've I've been in the learning space uh, basically my entire career, um, and I've spanned. I, I want to say so many different versions of learning, education, training, whatever term you want to put on it changes a lot um, as the years go by, but started out as a high school teacher, um, teaching 11th grade U.S. history. Um, and uh, at a certain point, I remember kind of going, what else is available to a person who's really fascinated by education and really passionate about learning and growth. And so I started talking to some, uh, you know, colleagues or contacts of mine. And, and I remember somebody, one of my friends said, you ever thought about human resources? And what, I go, what's that? What's that? What's <laughs> that? All, all, all I remembered was, you know, um, you know, my dad worked in the automobile industry. I remember human resources being kind of like, yeah, the police, <laughs> you know, something that sometimes people complained about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and so I was like, human resources, what, what's the relationship between learning and human resources? And it was like, oh, there's these whole departments that do educational programs and training, and they call it L&D. Um, and so I just, you know, got smart about that, went back and to school uh, and pursued a degree in education. Um, so I'm a little bit of an anomaly, you know, uh, in, I guess, in the corporate world and that, you know, a, a degree, a master's degree in education is not that common. No, I've, I don't think I've come across it once. <laughs> and I spoke to many, many CLOs <laughs> and, yeah. and HR executives. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud of it. Um, and, uh, um, and then, you know, progressively, I discovered uh, roles in in the corporate university, in um, learning and development, training and development, leadership development, um, and really just grew up uh, in a combination of consulting and in-house roles. Uh, I worked at um, Alcatel Lucent uh, for some time, working more on the sort of sales enablement and sales training side. Uh, went to Corn Ferry for several years and got just a breadth of experience there and everything from executive development, coaching, instructional design, sales training, talent management, succession planning. Um, <clears throat> moved over to Deloitte where I'd say I kind of pivoted a little bit and um, really started focusing more on learning technology, uh, big systems in, in learning, uh, learning programs, leadership programs, scaling programs, 
um, and then uh, found myself as CLO at Intel, which was the job I, I was in before I uh, came here to Moderna about five or so months ago. Yeah. One thing you left out though there, which I want to add for the audience, is you worked across yeah. multiple continents during those I times. Have, <laughs> uh, I have been around uh, the world a few times, which has been one of the most like rewarding and gratifying um, experiences. I wouldn't change that for anything. Um, I've had the ability to live uh, overseas and also, you know, travel overseas. Yeah. Um, so, and yeah, like you said, on multiple continents and um, it's always just such a thrilling um, experience to be able to uh, collaborate with people around the world on, um, you know, again, we, we get to do fun work in, in learning and development because it's about growth. It's about career development. It's about change. It's about innovation. Mm-hmm. And to do that with colleagues from around the world and see how different cultures are oriented to learning and growth and career. Uh, yeah, it's just been fascinating. I was going to ask you that, but when was there something that stood out in terms of the the culture, the approach to learning culturally in the different parts of the world that you worked in? Any, any surprises? Um, you know, I think it's a lot of the same stuff that we talk about. Uh, you know, just in just doing business uh, around the world. Uh, I know, I you know, I've I've traveled and worked throughout Latin America and. One thing I've learned there is that, you know, relationships really, really matter and the orientation to family and Mm -hmm. building those interpersonal connections uh, are what enable you to build trust and what enable you to um, be able to get really anything done, you know? So some people call it soft skills and diminish that kind of stuff as like, you know, oh, who's got time for all that? Yeah. But it's like, it's actually, it's like, no, I'm, I'm doing business. You it's just the don't. most important and, part. <laughs> yeah. It's a really important part. Yeah, exactly. It may not look like it on the surface or through a certain paradigm, but, but it is. And then, you know, I've been to other places where it's like, okay, let's just get straight down to business. Why are we here? And so, so being able to adapt, I mean, that's one of the skills I think I've um, developed over time, uh, you know, being in different places is like asking myself, how do I need to be different? Mm-hmm. Um, how do I need to adapt? Cause I don't, I don't want to be that person showing up and saying, Hey, you know, you need to adapt to me. I'm like, I no, I need to adapt to you. Exactly. I need to meet you where you are. And so that we can do something, uh, you know, important together. So that's a, that's a skill I've learned, or maybe I'm still learning. <laughs> well, let's, let's be honest. You, you really can't be in, in the role that you're in if, if you, unless you have that growth mindset. <laughs> and and you're always adapting and evolving especially when you're asking your people to do the same <laughs> in, in your absolutely yeah you got to role model um the growth mindset you've got to be the example of it and you know that's work too and uh you know i'm always asking people what have you read lately what are you seeing i'm sending articles around to people i'm asking for commentary and again a lot of times i get that pushback of like hey why are you wasting time you know i'm like i'm not wasting time i'm trying to engage us in a different thinking uh process so that we can learn something together you know because if it's just transact 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 i mean that is that's that that may meet meet a short-term need and and get something done in the short term but it's not the path to to long-term sustainability and innovation and growth so Mm -hmm. you got to live in both of those worlds which is really hard you know it's really really hard the human mind is is sort of wired to short term um so we have to overcome some of those tendencies to to yeah get some of those breakthroughs Mm-hmm. Um, what was it that attracted you to this role you know, from Intel to Moderna? What was it that most excited you about this opportunity? Uh, the opportunity at Moderna is a once in a career opportunity. It's, it is, um, it just can't be replicated. You, you have a company that is literally changing the world, has changed the world, uh, through, you know, the, the involvement with the, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and because of that has, has gained a, a voice on the world stage that, um, is really powerful, right? It's a, everyone it's a knows the name and the brand, right? If you didn't know before now, every person probably on the planet, you could ask who's Moderna yes. like, and they would know. <laughs> I think, yeah, the, the, the brand recognition is super strong. <clears throat> um, the relevance to, uh, the mission of human health is just 
so strong and spoke to me um, because I've, you know, I've experienced both myself and through many family members, I've experienced like the misery that um, disease can bring to a family. And to, to think about, okay, I can be part of an organization that wants to alleviate that and sees a path to like massive, like scalable impact to human health, right? Yeah. It, so that really was one level of um, connection that <clears throat> was really important for me. The other was we're, we're a relatively new company. Um, I mean, we've been around for a little over a decade, but as a commercial company, really just the last couple of years um, since COVID. And so the, the underlying infrastructure that, that you find in, in many you know, bigger companies isn't necessarily there, which I look at as a good thing, um, because we get to we get to learn from. I, I don't know if I'd call them mistakes, but just learn from the experiences of bigger pharmaceutical companies that have created some pretty bureaucratic, layered, complicated, cumbersome, slow-moving, uh, siloed organizations. Which doesn't help you as a learning organization either. <laughs> no, not at all. And you got to and and a lot of learning. Um, leaders end up trying to unravel and mitigate against all of that instead of actually creating value. So I'm like, okay, we don't have to go down that road and we can, we can build the organization that we want to build. And with relatively um, few constraints. Uh, <clears throat> we also have just the most committed visionary leadership that you can imagine. I mean, a CEO who is fascinated uh, with learning, uh, is a role model of learning. Um, the head of HR, my boss, same, um, shares that vision. So you've got a, a group of people around you who are challenging you to, to rethink uh, the way we do this. And you've got that sort of lack of constraints. Um, and you've got that, you know, incredibly powerful and important mission and purpose. And so that trifecta, I just don't think you find it very often. You know, it's not it's not that common. <laughs> Pretty good reason to get out of bed every day. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, excited. I have never felt this inspired and motivated in my entire career. Nice. I just, I'm like waking up at four o'clock in the morning, like, let's go, let's do this, <laughs> you know, because I just, it's, I, I feel it, you know, and I, you get to, we talk about employee engagement a lot. I'm like, you know, I, I know what it feels like now, mm -hmm. right? And I've been doing this kind of work for 25 years. Um, and I've felt it in other places, but never to the level I do today. Yeah. Tell everyone, because I know right now your main, one of the main focuses is the Moderna University and really creating a, a one of a kind learning organization. Yeah. yeah. Tell us what was the inspiration behind it and just walk everyone through the decision making of where, where, are, we, what, what, where are we trying to go <laughs> as opposed to yeah. kind of just, you know, not trying to reinvent the wheel <laughs> uh, along yeah. the way, I, I, whilst trying not, not to reinvent the wheel, if that makes sense. It does make sense. Uh, so Moderna University, um, we have uh, a pretty big vision for what it could be. Um, so first off, you know, it's for our employees, right? And we're 3,000 plus employees at this point, and um, we've got some of the smartest people on the planet working here who are doing incredible scientific uh, research um, and innovating in the way we do manufacturing, the way we do supply chain, the way we go to market through our commercial organization. And so we, Moderna University, you know, is for them, right? And is about helping our people upskill, acquire the skills that they want to acquire to grow their careers and to honestly, I'd say even find fulfillment in that intersection of you, who you are as a person and um, your career, right? We don't really want to see any separation yeah. there. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the first layer. Uh, the second layer goes beyond that, which is you know, I mentioned earlier, we've developed this platform and we've developed a brand and we've developed a relevance in the world and, and it can be used for other things than delivering medicine. Um, obviously that's our, the core of what we do and that is um, super important, but 
we can deliver education. We can deliver upskilling. You know, mRNA science is a relatively new domain. Mm -hmm. Um, in fact, I was out on uh, Coursera the other day and I, I just like searched in their, uh, you know, search field mRNA. I got one return. Really? Wow. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, who's going to take that leadership position of developing career paths into the STEM programs, into the, the technical colleges, into the early talent pipelines, into the diverse talent pipelines, because we need more diversity. So you're talking about then this... now going, learning going beyond the walls of oh, the yeah. organization. Yeah. Yeah. Way beyond the walls, way beyond the walls is so, you know, this, the university is an institution of education and it really is for the ecosystem. Um, our employees are part of that ecosystem. Our healthcare providers are part of that ecosystem. Um, the, the nurses, community, the pharmacists, community. the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, so it's all sort of on the table. Um, and I think that is a, um, the thing that we're thinking about differently. How do you reach millions of people? Uh, what do they want to know about? Uh, what would be an engaging experience for them? Um, that's quite a radical. Those are all that's, questions that's quite, we're trying to answer. That's quite a radical shift, isn't it, from the traditional approach? Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't say we're the first. Um, I, I know for you know, take for example, you know what Google does on Coursera with you know career sure. certificates. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. it, they've commercialized it um, and they've done it really successfully. IBM too, others. Um, so I, it's Link, not a LinkedIn, brand new idea. LinkedIn, for example, but in biotech, it it, it mm -hmm. kind of is because biotech has been so driven by this sort of you know this intellectual property. Um, Keep everything it, closed it, off. We have to be super yeah. sensitive about everything, etc. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So where do you where do you where did you start on this journey? Is this something you're building internally? You, you know, have you partnered up with another organization? Because you know those decisions that you're going to make now are really going <laughs> to are very important <laughs> to get yeah. right now up front and, and ask the right questions of what yeah. are we really trying to achieve? What problem we're trying to solve? And then working backwards. Yeah, I mean the first thing we did. Um, is set up a, a university governance structure that would honestly look a lot like an academic uh, institution structure, which has been a topic of huge debate, right? It's, you know, everybody, well, a, a trend was sort of moving us away from the structured university into more unstructured learning. But we personally for ourselves felt like a governance framework that resembles an academic institution um, was going to be important for us to be able to communicate how we're structured, manage our resources, manage our curriculum. Um, and so what we did is that we have, you know, at the university level, we have five colleges. What are those five then? So the five are uh, our commercial college, uh, which others would, you know, probably know as sales, sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. um, digital, which others would probably know as IT or kind of digital transformation college. Um, manufacturing, what we call CMC, uh, chemicals, manufacturing and controls, uh, innovation uh, in human health, which is really around our R&D um, and the science of what we do, and then leadership culture and management. So five colleges, each college has a dean. Uh, the <laughs> dean's role is to envision the, the long-term uh, skilling roadmap for that college. So what are the skills that are coming down the road? What do we need to be who you, you know, you asked who are the partners, right? Each, uh, each college has a different set of partners because the expertise is coming from external institutions and internally to us. So that Dean role, and then underneath each um, college, you've got uh, academies. So take, for example, the digital college, right? The IT college, there's mm -hmm. a, an artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, academy. There's a cybersecurity academy. There's a, uh, a cloud academy, an ERP academy, uh, a digital literacy and uh, uh, data literacy sure. academy. So the, so the structure really goes university kind of at the top, then the five colleges, then um, the academies underneath each one. How did you uh, choose the dean? Because I'm assuming these are people that already have a full time role yeah. <laughs> in the organization yeah. and are on top of that. Are these senior stakeholders in the business? Yes. Do you really want those 
Yeah. Yeah. They're senior stakeholders. We did, we went through a process of, you know, almost nominating and, and discussing and, and, and selecting the deans because we see it as a, an essential role. Um, the, What's deans, the reaction <laughs> but the reaction's been incredible. And we even, um, are scheduling things like, uh, sessions called meet the deans and for opportunities for people to get familiar with the deans and to ask them questions and to also provide input into, Hey, I think we should, you know, think about something in this space, or I think we should pursue this skill that I'm seeing coming down the road. Um, because the, the purpose of each one of these colleges is to keep, keep us at the cutting edge. And they're the I experts, mean, right? You and the team. They're the they're <laughs> subject matter experts. Exactly. They're imminent in their domains. Um, and uh, so their role is to really envision that curriculum, envision the roadmap, envision um, how, that, uh, <clears throat> how that particular college is going to kind of take its learning to market. Love that. Um, and yeah, they've, they're um, embracing the role. Uh, you know, you asked, how did we pick them? It was a combination of factors. First, it was, are, you know, are you a super respected leader in the organization? Are you passionate about education? Um, and some people, some of our deans have a background in academia, you know, because again, we're a scientific organization. So the, 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 the line between academia and, and corporate is a little blurry. You know, we need academia, right? We, we need partnerships. We need um, academics uh, yeah. working for us and helping us with our, our research and development. Was there any um, pushback on the branding behind calling it a university and the stigma attached to what a university means when people think of university for your wider employee population? Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, I mean, we did have that discussion kind of like, it, you know, is there some more innovative way to yeah. say this? Make, uh, create a brand around it. We looked at, you know, other examples out in the marketplace and some do use the university uh, wording and others don't. Or academy or stuff like that, right? Like all, all sorts Exactly. Of and we created that taxonomy of university college academy. So did, we didn't want to call the the umbrella brand an academy because mm -hmm. we wanted to use that word for deeper down, like at the skill level. It. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that I mean, we had that debate and uh, um, it, it, I think we just decided that that wasn't the place where we wanted to try to explain ourselves. It says what it is straight away. You don't have to explain yeah, create a lot of time, energy, resources, branding, marketing to explain. Oh, by the way, this is what you mean. By exactly. Yeah, yeah, we came up with it, we, you know, in our kind of brainstorming, we came up with some pretty <laughs> out there names and it was like a lot of people were like, Hey, that's pretty cool, but what, what is mean? it? What does it mean for me as well, right? Yeah, what does it mean? Yeah, what does it mean for me? Whereas when you say Moderna University, people are like, okay, I get that, you know? Okay. And but, there's a reason Apple, you mm -hmm. know, called theirs Apple University too. I mean, they just decided to innovate in other places. Yeah, you you, you spend your time innovating on on the the how, you know, and, and, and how you do it and the, what makes that different. So, uh, right. is it, so are you, the overall platform, are you using like an existing LMS, LXP, et cetera? For that. Yep, we're using both. Uh, we use SAP Success Factors for our LMS, and we're um, starting down a journey with EdCast uh, mm -hmm. for our LXP. Um, and what were and, the, what uh, were the main considerations when choosing those? Because you know it seems like every day there's a new shiny tool or software <laughs> that pops up everywhere. Yeah. We, could, we could have a, a list of hundred organizations. Yep. Uh, you bet. And yeah, I mean, there's there. And the way we approach that is by creating an innovation pipeline. So we're like, okay, we can put innovation through our system all the time, micro learning, nano learning, digital badging, you name it, like we're, we're open to just about everything. And we'll experiment in small pockets of the organization with with um, those types of things. We do not do big launches, just don't do them at all. I, I am not a supporter so of just like piloting a, a, first. Is that, is that what you mean? Pilot it. Find a group that's willing to try something out with mm -hmm. you. Do get a ton of feedback, and then you know if it goes through that stage, move it to the next stage of your innovation pipeline until it turns into something that you can scale, or yeah. you know you cut it loose and say this just this just didn't work for us. So what was the main um, reasons then that you? I'm always interested in this. What was the main reasons that you chose SAP Success Factors over the competition? The, so SAP was part of um, was part of the ecosystem before I came in. Mm -hmm. um, so that helps. <laughs> uh, yeah, it helps. And, you know, it, it, it does a lot of what we needed to do. You know, we're a heavily regulated industry. 
um, there's just a huge amount of regulatory requirements in, in what we do. And so having a system that can, can keep you up to date on the regulatory demands is important and, and SAP can, can do that for us. Um, but it's not the, the learner experience that we need, right? Mm -hmm. Which is why we're going down the road with EdCast because we need that front end um, that allows us to create learning, curate learning, share yeah. learning, create social around the learning, um, produce learning, build those academies and those colleges that I talked about, organize them um, in an intuitive uh, way so that people can, when they, you know, when they come into the system, they find what they're looking for, they find engaging content, um, they're producing their own content, you know, again, harnessing all that expertise that, that we have here. Um, so that was the reason we went or are going down um, yeah. an implementation path with EdCast. Yeah. Have you used them before? Well, what, what made you choose them? Because you know, I've, heard, I've heard good things <laughs> yeah. about them. But what I've, I've used uh, a lot of them. Um, and uh, I, you know, we went through a pretty rigorous selection process and, and they kind of met more of our requirements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good thing, setting out in, 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 in beforehand your requirements. And as opposed to looking at all the new shiny tools and objects, so these are our requirements and then working from there <laughs> as opposed yeah. to getting caught up in all these features that actually don't move the needle towards what you're trying to achieve. Absolutely. You got to know what you're trying to achieve, because, again, we we're trying to, you know, create in the university and more broadly in HR, we're trying to create a highly differentiated uh, employee experience mm -hmm. and we are trying to be a one of a kind organization that's different, that thinks differently, that is unique. What, what makes um, it different? That is not like then? every other pharma company. What would you say then makes Moderna University different to other, to, to typical learning organizations that exist or academies that, you know, universities that exist in companies? I'd say, uh, first of all, it's one of the big things is, is that dean structure that I talked about, you know, having our deans as the role models and representatives yes. coming from the business um, and really representing the, the learning needs to become that organization that we want to become in the next 10 and 20 years. So that's a big one is those having those voices, but then just the level of experimentation, um, the pace at which we move. I mean, you can obviously imagine the pace at which Moderna moves. It's uh, we sometimes joke around Moderna speed, right? <laughs> and and those are that's the kind of speed you need when you're dealing with programs that are um, impacting people's lives, right? There's no time to waste, right? So we move fast, we experiment fast, we cut things loose fast, we um, double down on things fast, we communicate fast. Um, we want to go out with things that we think our learners will um, tolerate things not being fully baked. If they get the opportunity to jump in, try, provide feedback, shape things with us. Um, so again, it goes back to what we talked about, you know, towards the beginning of the, the talk is, you know, that that sort of blank piece of paper. Yeah. Um, it's like, do, let's do that with our learners, right? Like, I don't, I don't need to sit back in some room and design it all with my team and then go it's ready okay you're invited now <laughs> and then you hope know? and hope we always do that and then we end up changing a million things <laughs> and if we I mean and there's learning in the design of exactly. the learning ecosystem that you want that's a learning process too um and it, yeah it, it just I'm so blown away by the 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 willingness of the Moderna employee to engage in shaping designing providing input feedbacking testing piloting I mean, the appetite is just incredible. It's off the charts, right? It's it's just like you can't satisfy that that hunger of people here to learn and grow, which it's is because just, it's really people cool. feel heard, right? They feel like that my voice is valued, my opinions valued, and that is what and they're engaged. Then they become engaged, and also the effect of all of this is you then shape a culture of learning uh, in in your organization because yeah. people are like, oh wow, I actually. Messed, uh, suggested that and here it is <laughs> uh, yeah and i mean in my career i mean i've done a lot of instructional design and i've made a lot of mistakes and i think one of the biggest mistakes is 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 trying to perfect the program uh and like you spend 90 percent on the final five percent of, of sort of value right and and then I've also done a lot of facilitation. I mean, I've stood up in front of rooms. I've facilitated hundreds and hundreds of sessions over the years. And I'm like, every program 
that I've either designed or somebody else has designed and helped and trained me to deliver. I never actually learned about that program until I got into the classroom and taught it. Mm. I could study the manual, I could study the facilitator's guide, but I didn't know that program until I went into a room and, and talked with participants and saw how it goes, what the energy level was, where the questions were coming from. So I'm like, now I just want to get into the classroom as fast as possible. Because <laughs> that's actually where you like find out if it, what, what, you know, how it's going to land and how it's going to resonate. Like, let's get in there as fast as we possibly can. Yeah. What would you say has been the biggest win so far? Um, we have uh, been launching in, inside of that digital college and in, in artificial intelligence academy that's been a pretty big success. Um, we've uh, the, the, the kind of core of the design of the program is around the development of AI use cases. And at Moderna, we, one of our mindsets is, is digitize everywhere, uh, be, become a digital first organization. Like let's build our organization as we scale to be digital. Uh, let's not create an analog organization that later on we have to digitize, right? And that's again, one of the benefits we have. So the AI Academy is very focused on helping people to find use cases of where that where they can find opportunities in their job to automate mm -hmm. and to um, use AI to help us get smarter, to scale faster, to reach patients faster, to squeeze out inefficiency, whatever it might be. And the use cases that have been coming in are just brilliant. I mean, it's like, wow, you know, people are having these ideas, they see the opportunities, they're not scared by AI. You know, this whole discussion of like, is it going to take our jobs? I'm like, we're not talking about that. We're, <laughs> yeah. we're not talking about that. We're, we're like, no, this is going to enable our jobs. We're going to be able to do more. We're going to achieve our mission better and faster. And, and so the AI Academy has produced hundreds of, of use cases now. Um, and that we're creating a backlog and a pipeline of, of AI use cases that are being evaluated. Um, we are doing a hackathon um, where we beat up those ideas and get feedback <laughs> on them. And um, it's just been really cool because it, it kind of aligns to the strategy and mission of the company. Uh, it's part of our mindsets, which is, um, you know, digitize everywhere we possibly can. And it's, 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 uh, it's a program that we're going to continue to scale. Yeah, I just love how all of this is, is your employees in the organization owning it and it's not sitting within an L&D function. You know, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. kind of complete opposite. <laughs> oh. well, my L and D function honestly isn't big enough, or it, we're not equipped to to do uh, the size of the mission and ambition that we have. We we couldn't pull it off if we were uh, operating in old ways. We need the whole organization involved and behind us um, to build. You know, th that AI academy, a cyber academy. Uh, a data literacy academy, an, an mRNA science academy, a, an innovation in human health academy, a advanced manufacturing and operational effectiveness academy, uh, you know, not to mention our leadership programs, a manager academy, an executive academy, uh, a technical women's pipeline development academy. Um, we've got like huge ambitions of what we're trying to build. We're trying to be the best. I mean, people, when they ask me, what are you trying to do? I say, we're trying to be the best. And they go, well, what do you mean? I mean, the best, like the role model, like the company that everybody, when they say who is leading the way in progressive and innovative learning and development, they say Moderna, right? Yeah. And I'm like, nobody's claimed that position. We should claim it. Like, we should just like back in stand the day, up and say, that's us. Back in you know? the day, you used, to say, you used to hear that a lot, long, and maybe not so much now, but back in with GE, you used to be like the gold, yeah, the gold standard. Yeah, GE was, was like, the gold standard. Yeah. yeah, it was the gold standard. And um, yeah, and they were. I mean, they had some some pretty awesome programming. I think they missed a couple really important pivots along the way. Yeah, and there's some learnings uh, there that we can you know benefit from. But yeah, they absolutely were. How do you measure success though? Because this is something that's always been tough in L and D. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to measure what does the success look like, and how you, how do you plan on measuring that? Yeah, I've gotten that question literally thousands of times over my uh, <laughs> career. And I, I kind of have a slightly different way of thinking about it than, so, so on the operational side of running a corporate university, you need, to, you need to measure a lot of stuff. You need to measure throughput on programs and your ad drop rates and your seat 
you know, utilization and uh, you need to measure, you know, the, the access to your content subscriptions and to your LMS and your LXP. Like there's all kinds of operational metrics that you can use to just say, are we running a good operation? Yeah. After that though, I don't really um, fuss around that much with ROI. Uh, it's like, I, I and, and it's another reason why I'm so, why I was drawn to working at Moderna is that the, the it's, if you want to do great learning and development, it has to be based on a belief system, not an ROI model. Mm-hmm. I feel like once you're once you're measuring ROI on something like as n- intangible as education, it, you know you kind of have gotten distracted and gone down a rabbit hole that maybe isn't going to deliver a lot of value. So, I kind of um, uh, so I like again I'm like not anti measurement. I want to measure okay, are things working. Are they are yeah. they running well? Are we doing a good job of of running this this operation? But at the highest level, it's like, do we believe in the mission that we're trying to deliver here? Do we just believe it's the right thing to do? Are our people engaged? <laughs> um, is, is what we and I, I get what you're saying because sometimes when you're too heavily ROI focused, you can you can make data look however you want it to. You can make you can you can make you can and it means that you and the team will focus our time and energy on that as opposed to what you're doing now, which is really empowering your employees to take their own learning into their own hands. Uh, instead of going, yeah, how do we hit this number? Studies that show that companies that over you know the course of decades that prioritize, fund, um, sponsor great learning and development create value for you know, their people, their customers, and their shareholders. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of, but the correlation of any one thing to any other thing is, is a futile effort in, and it's not worth wasting our time to try to, because like you said, uh, engagement. Yeah. Learning and development has an impact on engagement. How much? I don't know. Because compensation also does. So does employee relations. So does the workspace. So does all these factors. And so, so how could I make a, a, um, how could I make a statement that says the ROI you're getting on employee engagement is coming this much from learning and development. You just got to believe, Hey, it's part of the solution. It's part of the the equation. Let's, let's go hard on it. Right. Um, so I don't know. I, maybe I'm in a minority on this one. Uh, <laughs> well, ask the know. audience, everyone listening, what do you think? <laughs> Leave your comments <laughs> below. <laughs> um, well, before I let you go, what, what advice would you give to the HR leaders that are listening who are considering going on a similar journey to yourselves? Um, I get a, I do a lot of talks with, uh, you know, up and coming learning and development leaders and HR leaders. And they, they ask, you know, what's the, what's the path? And my path has been so winding and circular and unpredictable I, I can't even really try to be like do this do this do this but what about building your own university specifically around the journey you're going on now ah uh, okay yeah i mean it's it is a mega undertaking so you've got to um really make sure that it's something your organization wants to sign up for because you're going to be asking people for time you're going to be asking people for um, energy focus. You're going to be you're going to be needing uh, you know a budget and and funds. And so you've got to test that belief system of like, is this something we want to do? And and I'm going to get that support. And uh, you know, can I can I bring people along on this journey? And if the answer is yes, then go big, right? The corporation is becoming an, another type of educational institution. It's 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 not just hey you know the universities and then we go and work in the company like the, we're we are studying as we work right. We're getting a new type of degree, and we also have expertise and knowledge that it, the world really can benefit from. You know when I think about like what value Moderna can bring to the world, it's not just the medicines we make. It's the way, it's the knowledge we have around how we make things, how we do, how we do our particular version of, of science. There are people that really could benefit from that. And there are careers that can be shaped uh, around that expertise. And so we have a responsibility to, to do as much as we can with that knowledge. And, you know, I, I would just like to see more uh, corporate universities thinking 
bigger in that way yeah. uh, in terms of that social responsibility side of what they're doing and that talent development side and taking whatever expertise they have, whether it, whatever industry it may be, out to the world. Um, because could you imagine uh, oh, cool. if, 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 if all these you know, companies unleashed that out into the world, I think it'd be, it'd be pretty powerful. That would be amazing. <laughs> that would be pretty amazing. Well, look, thanks so much for coming on the show. I'm super, I know you're just starting the journey, so we're going to have to do a part two. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Part two, line. part three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And see and see how it's evolved. Um, before I let you go, where can people connect with you? If they want to reach out to you personally, say hi, what's the best way to connect with you? Uh, you, you can hit me up on LinkedIn or you can email me at noah.rabinowitz at modernatx.com. Amazing. Well, thanks for coming on the show and look forward to doing it again soon. All right, Chris. Yeah, great to be here.